So I've been talking about uh, streaming audio for a while as one of the big challenges remaining for the for a fully headless uh, uh, radio, uh, and that is uh, taking the radio received audio and streaming that audio over Wi-Fi to a browser uh, using one of the standard web audio formats and plugins. So there are a number of formats to choose from to do that: uh, OGG, uh, Vorbis, MP3, and so on and so forth. But I've chosen for simplicity uh, the WAV format. Um, and the WAV data stream itself is uh, pretty much the same, at least the data portion, as I2S. So it's kind of convenient from that perspective. I think the other convenient thing is there's no complicated code involved. Um, there are libraries for MP3 and Og Vorbis, um, but they are indeed uh, quite complex libraries and uh, kind of didn't want to get into that at, at this point. Now, the main advantage of those two libraries, MP3, Old Vorbis, and other formats, is that they're a comp compressed stream, whereas uh, the WAV data stream is, uh, is uncompressed. So in this video, um, what I'm going to do is give a quick background on the uh, WAV or WAVE uh, file format. Um, then I'm going to develop a simple ESP32 uh, uh, server application that serves up uh, the WAV and uh, show the browser code to receive it. And then finally, I'm going to integrate that server code with the ESP ADF audio pipeline uh, with an I2S um, audio source. Um, so what I won't get into in this video is connecting all the above to the radio that I built in the previous videos. That'll probably come in a, in a follow-up video. Uh, I think I've got some work to do, as I mentioned in the last video, to um, to basically put some RF shielding around the uh, around the TALO detector. Okay, so let's start with some basics on uh, the Wave uh, audio format, um, and it's a standard that was developed by IBM and Microsoft some time ago. Um, I've got a link here, which is a pretty good uh, article on the uh, on the actual format of the files. But let me just go through that in a little bit of detail here. So. Here's the, uh, the so-called canonical uh, wave format here, and it consists of, of three major portions. Uh, there is the riff chunk descript des descriptor, which basically uh, describes at a high level the format of the, uh, the WAV file. So it can, contains this chunk ID, which is riff, the text riff. Uh, format is WAVE. And then this chunk size here is basically the uh, the size of the data that includes the um, format subchunk as well as the data subchunk. So it's basically I think 36 bytes plus whatever the uh, the uh, whatever this takes up here. So the second uh, portion is the format subchunk, and there's a better description just down here of that, and that basically describes the uh, the audio format. So it contains values like the audio format itself, which uh, we'll be using PCM here, pulse code modulation, which is the same modulation that uh, I2S uses. Number of channels, so you can have either a mono or a stereo or uh, more channels if you wish. The sample rate, so 8044.1K, uh, 16K and so on and so forth. We've got a byte rate here, block align. And then finally, the other important one is the bits per sample. So we'll be using six, 16 bits per, um, per sample. Um, and that's kind of the standard that we've been using so far. So what I've done is I've created a little uh, C program that uh, implements that uh, WAV format, and it's right here. And I'll include a link to the GitHub repo that uh, uh, that this uh, uh, this program's in. And what this basically does is you give it a number of seconds of recording, number of channels, bits per sample, and so on and so forth, and it'll create the uh, the WAV header and then it'll populate the data, and I've got a few different types of samples here. In this case, what I'm constructing here is a square wave, or a, uh, an approximation to a square wave, at the uh, recording frequency, which um, I've got the current recording frequency at a kilohertz. So let's run that. Give that a go. Uh, I don't want to be in debug mode. I actually just want to run it. There we go, it's generated the file. You can see it's created uh, a file of length eight, uh, 880 kilobytes in length. Let's just go to the uh, directory that's created in here. So if you can have a look, let's, let me just show you this. So here's the file that it created, sample.wav. And then let me play that for you using A play. 
and you can see there's that uh, there's that square wave tone. So let's dig into that format a little bit more. What I'll do is I'll bring up, I've got an Audacity uh, on this uh, laptop here. I'll uh, bring that up and we'll be able to see the actual uh, format of the file. Okay, so I've opened up this uh, file in Audacity. Let's uh, drill into this. Uh, we'll take a subsection there and drill in. And there you can see there's that square wave that I'm generating there. Let me drill in a little bit further. And there you can see the set, the individual samples themselves. And uh, you know this is an approximation to a square wave uh, using the, the, the kind of the standard odd harmonics there. So you can see there's a little bit of a ringing on either side of the uh, of the square wave. So just to pr prove things are uh, are working here, let me change the frequency to something a little bit higher. Let's say uh, let's do three thousand hertz. Run that again. It's generated the file again. Now let me play it. You can see there's a much higher higher pitch tone there. So anyway, that's. Um, that's basically uh, generating um, a wave uh, format file. So what I'll move on to next is uh, incorporating a dynamic uh, generation of that file within the um, within the ESP IDF uh, server, and then we'll stream it up to a browser. So that's coming right up. So in the last section, uh, wave file was dynamically created. Uh, in this section, we're going to stream it. So the first challenge. Um, is that a WAV uh, file is of fixed length. So to change that to streaming, uh, there's a simple hack that's done here to uh, basically set the length to maximum length. Uh, now this is not really in line with the WAV spec, but uh, it seems to work at least with the browsers that I've tried, uh, Chrome, uh, Brave, um, and uh, potentially other browsers. Um, and so we can see that uh, in here where we're setting the header here, uh, here's the old code where it uh, interrogates the length and then sets that appropriately. I'm just setting it to all Fs here. So the next challenge is how to stream the WAV file. Um, and in this case, we'll be dynamically generating uh, the WAV content, so it won't be a static file. The easiest way to do this is to use the ESPIDF uh, inbuilt uh, web server and stream that way. Uh, that way we'll be able to, uh, the browser will recognize the uh, I'll be able to open the uh, um, connection. It'll be able to stream the content back. Um, so here's the code to do that here. So I'm in Stream Handler, and Stream Handler is invoked whenever uh, the web server sees the slash stream URI. So slash stream URI means that this function here is invoked. And so you can see here, the first thing it does is it constructs that header that we just looked at in streaming wav dot here. So this basically constructs a header with the endless length. And then it starts streaming. And to start streaming, what it does is it fills this a, a fixed buffer uh, with content, with PCM content at this frequency, so 600 hertz. And then it just iterates through um, calling uh, HTTP RESP send chunk, which sends that content that content out. So that's effectively we're just streaming the content out, keeping this slash stream URI connection alive, and the browser on the other side is just keeping the connection alive, and it receives the content and plays it appropriately. You can see this for loop only exits uh, when this receives an error, and typically that error would be received if the uh, if the browser tab were, were to be closed or the browser to be closed and so, or, or so on and so forth. So let's see that in action. So um, I've got that running at the moment. Let's go to the browser. We'll open up the um, streaming audio page. Click on the play button. Now the, note that the sound, a couple of things going on here. The sound you're hearing, let me just turn that to, down a little bit, bear with me. So the sound that you're hearing is being generated from the ESP32. It's being streamed over Wi-Fi and being received by the browser control here and being played. And note a couple of things. The first thing was there was a fairly significant de delay at the start there of about 10 seconds or so. Let's try that again. Um, we'll reset that, start playing it again. 
and you'll notice there's a delay of at least five to ten seconds before the content starts streaming. And uh, that's obviously not ideal because what it means is that the, uh, let me just uh, turn this off, uh, it is that the content that I'm going to be playing through this is at least five to ten seconds delayed coming through the speakers. Now, uh, obviously I want to use this in my radio, so that's kind of not entirely ideal because what you'll be hearing is kind of from five, five to ten seconds ago. Let's have a quick look at the uh, code on the browser side. Um, now, with modern browsers, uh, pretty much all of them have uh, HTML5 audio support, so it really is quite simple. There's no plugins in the browser or anything like that. So you can see here I'm using the HTML5 audio tag here. Um, this controls tag just simply instructs the browser to display the play and the pause button and the volume control. Preload, preload equals none means that uh, the um, browser will only uh, start streaming when you press the play button. And then down here we have the source. This is the URL from which the stream is played. So you can see here I'm using 8080 as the streaming port. That's separate. Uh, that separate separate web server that I that I talked about setting up. And then type uh, the the browser. Basically, you can have multiple of these source tags here, each for a different audio type, whether it's OG or or MP3. So this basically says I'm expecting to see uh, wave uh, audio format from this URL. So just to reinforce um, the ESPIDF web server is completely single threaded. So when the uh, web server is occupied by sending this streaming content out, it can't do anything else. So for my radio, because I want to, I want to basically um, uh, send both the streaming content as well as HTML content and JavaScript, I'm going to have to create two web servers to do the streaming, one to, do, one to be devoted entirely to the streaming and the other one to, to be devoted to uh, sending the uh, static content. So what I'm going to move on to next is I've got the streaming working, uh, but I want to tie it all together and integrate um, the uh, streaming server in with the ESP ADF audio pipeline. So that's coming right up. Okay, so let's move to the final uh, part for this video, and that's integrating the streaming HTTP audio into the ESP audio framework, which I uh, covered in a bit of detail in uh, an earlier video. So on the left-hand side here, we've got a conceptual model of, uh, of what's going on here in the setup. So I'll be using a phone as the, uh, as the audio source, um, and I'll be playing some royalty-free free, free music. Uh, the link to that is going to be below. So the audio is sent through to the PMOD audio board. Um, the PMOD audio board uh, turns the uh, um, analog audio stream into a 16-bit uh, I2S stream. Uh, in this case, I've got it uh, running at 16 kilohertz, so the, the sound isn't going to be quite that good. It's certainly not CD audio uh, quality. That stream is then ingested by the ESP ADF I2S reader. And the reader's job is just to pull the stream off the I2S uh, interface and place it on a ring buffer. I've introduced a new um, uh, ADF uh, uh, audio element component here called Streaming HTTP Audio. And its job is to basically, um, uh, it has contained within it that web server that we saw in the last part of the video. And that web server is listening on 8080 slash stream for incoming connections. Now, if there's no incoming connections, basically the stream is uh, just thrown in the bit bucket. If there is an active uh, incoming connection initiated by the browser, this component sends the incoming I2S stream out through the... Um, uh, through the, the connection and off to the browser client, which has the uh, uh, the setup that we discussed before with the uh, HTML page and the audio tag. So the only real modification to the audio stream here, which is all at uh, 16 kilohertz, is I throw away the right channel and just send the left channel out there. Um, and that's really just to conserve bandwidth. Uh, when I 
uh, sort of in integrate this with my uh, radio. Uh, obviously, I don't have a stereo stream there. I just have a mono stream. So let's see this in action. I've uh, hit the play button on the phone here. So let's go over to the uh, over to the computer. We'll bring up that browser page that we we're at before. Uh, there we go. Click on the play button, and as we saw before, there's a delay as the audio is buffered. And uh, there's the audio starting up. So let me uh, let me turn the volume up a little bit so you can hear that a bit better. Now it sounds a bit muffled because uh, it's only running at 16 kilohertz sampling rate. So that's the audio being streamed from the phone to the ESP IDF through, uh, through the uh, PMOD board, out through Wi-Fi being received by the browser, and uh, you can hear it playing. So let me just move forward in the audio so you can see that. I've just clicked on the move forward, and you can see there's a delay between hitting uh, changing the audio on the phone to uh, uh, it being received on in the browser there. So anyway, that's a, a wrap for this video. Uh, you know, obviously the next uh, big step is to integrate all this uh, sort of audio processing and streaming with the radio that I built in uh, previous videos, but. Um, um, that's the uh, kind of the, the last major milestone uh, for, for this uh, project, which was the streaming audio. Uh, now, what I do, I do want to do is I've got streaming outbound audio. Uh, I do want to play around with streaming inbound audio. So in other words, being able to pick up uh, through the PC's microphone, through the browser, and then have it transmitted to the, um, to the ESP32, again, over Wi-Fi. So... Uh, I'll have a bit of a play around with that, uh, but that's a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as I said, one more plug for the uh, the site that I got this royalty-free music on. I'll include links below to the to the music that's on there.